You're watching NBC San Diego News. It's a crisis within a crisis. Hidden among California's rising unhoused population is a growing number of seniors aging without a home. In the next half hour, you'll meet members of this vulnerable group, see their living conditions, and witness the challenges they face when trying to find help. Thanks for joining us. I'm Monica Dean. When we think about homelessness, seniors aren't typically the people who come to mind, but data show they are the fastest growing group among the unhoused population. Recently, a new study shows people 55 and older living on the streets make up a third of the unsheltered population here in California. These are not just people who have been homeless for a long time. Many of them are experiencing this for the first time as seniors. According to the California's Homeless Data Integration System, between 2017 and 2021, the number of people 55 and over who sought homelessness services increased 84%. By comparison, people across all ages accessing homeless services increased by 43%. Those seniors are having to face tough choices, food, medicine, or a roof, with many of them on a fixed income and the ever-growing cost of living here in America's finest city, seniors are faced with harsh living conditions and some very tough choices. Joining me now is NBC San Diego's Amber Frias, who has been researching and reporting on this topic. And Amber, you recently spent a few days meeting members of this vulnerable population and learning about how they fell into homelessness in the first place. Yeah, that's right, Monica. You know, we often hear that our homeless population population just keeps growing. So I wanted to go out there, see why that is and who these people are, the ones who are ending up on our streets and in speaking with advocates and just being out there, you know, mm -hmm. I came to realize these people are a lot older than what we sometimes assume they are. Yes, it's interesting to see the face of a topic that we certainly often generalize up close and they are one of the most vulnerable populations and Amber, they're facing a harsh new reality. Yeah, that reality is that working your whole life does not guarantee you'll have a roof over your head. Most of the people I spoke with simply cannot afford housing costs in this city. The majority had it one way or another, either struggled to keep up with rising rent costs or are simply unable to find places to live due to their limited financial resources. As a result, as you pointed out at the top, data show seniors are indeed the fastest growing group among the homeless population. And with the help of one local activist, I I got to spend some time with this growing community to better understand their living conditions and the challenges they face every day. On a recent morning in the Ridgeview Webster neighborhood of Eastern San Diego, Chuck Scott stopped by to check on his truck. He was with a healthcare worker from a local rehabilitation center where he was staying. It was a discharge meeting in the hospital on Saturday. What were you in the hospital for? I fell down right here. The stay at the center is only temporary. This is what Scott calls home. The 69-year-old has been living out of his truck for the past two years. Well, it's definitely inconvenient, you know, because you got to go and take care of the people's houses and inconvenience them, you know, and, uh, and so now we think we need to find places to eat. And uh, it's not very comfortable to sleep in. Scott hardly stands out from the many people living in their cars at this same parking lot. As far as the sleeping arrangement, I'll sleep right here and try to move my seat as far back as I can so my legs will stretch up. A lot of times it doesn't work that way. And same with Irene, she'll try to do the same thing. Frank, who prefer to only go by his first name, and his partner, Irene Rendon, have called their truck home for six months. It's been, it's been really, really hard. Real hard to get help. I thought I was on a waiting list for six months and I'm not even on the list and I thought I had done the footwork and I just thought the, the government was going to help homeless people, you know what I mean? Why we have to jump through all these hoops to get housing. They want us off the street and stuff and it's really hard. The group all above the age of 55 find themselves in the middle of a growing crisis, aging without a home. It's torture. California accounts for about a third of the nation's homeless population, and among this population, seniors are the fastest growing group. In San Diego, people 55 and older living in the streets make up at least 29 percent of the unsheltered population, with 80 percent of them becoming homeless in their own hometown. Now, these are people that you know have lived and worked here in San Diego their entire lives who have just been priced out of the system and unable to, you know, finish, you know, in essence, in the homes that they had. 
Teresa Smith is the CEO of Dreams for Change, a nonprofit running San Diego safe sleeping sites. The two designated lots offer safe, legal camping space for people experiencing homelessness. Hundreds of individuals are currently housed, and Smith says at least 45 percent of them are 55 and older. Um, I think it's happening more rapidly now, yes, because of the cost, inflation, and the cost of living. Um, it really is pushing them out of those housing situations, and there's nothing to jump back into. And we have such a shortage of literally senior housing. So even as they start to approach those senior ages, where they may need a little bit more of that support as any other senior would be, there is nowhere that is affordable for them to even go. That's exactly what happened to Scott, who at one point was living inside his very own one-bedroom apartment. I, um, my rent went from $800 to $1,600. And I couldn't afford to move back in after they remodeled. So, um, you know, they said they give me first choice to move back in, but I can't, I only get $1,000 a month for those security. So how can I afford to pay $1,600 a month? I can't. Stories like Scott's are common, especially among the older populations living on the streets. How often do you see people, you know, of older age, like seniors, like 60, 70, coming into the shelter? You see a lot of them. You know, a lot of them that need medical attention and stuff like that. And a lot of them that shouldn't even be here should be somewhere else like convalescent like home or something, you know? And and it's sad, you know? I mean, as far as they ain't got, like, you know, kids that want to take care of them. Some people are stuck in their old ways of, like, not trying to get help for themselves. Like, you know, being stubborn. Like, that's how I am, you know? I won't call an ambulance coming to help me. I'll, I'll lay there and die. I don't care. That's just me. Daniel Lofredo is currently living at one of San Diego's safe sleeping sites. He managed being on the streets for the past 20 years until life started catching up to him. Now at 51 years old, Lofredo suffers from a wide range of illnesses. I'm dealing with sci uh, sciatic nerve damage in my right leg. I got cellulitis, um, other, other issues you know, I don't want to get into. Research shows that living on the streets prematurely ages and sickens people. Peers. When talking about homelessness, 50 is the new 75. Margot Cushell, director of UC San Francisco's Benioff Homeless and Housing Initiative, has been studying senior homelessness for the past decade. Whether it be measures of cognitive decline, mobility problems, problems with function, falling, all of the things that we usually think of happening to people in late life just happened to people 20 or 30 years earlier. Kushel says their situation can also trigger anxiety, depression, and substance abuse. We heard from so many people who experience homelessness who told us that they use substances as a coping mechanism, using things like methamphetamines to stay awake, using things like um, alcohol to help them cope with the anxiety, the fear, the, um, the difficulty falling asleep, those things. Driving down the streets of downtown San Diego, the amount of unhoused seniors stands out. I'm going to go over to 16th and commercial area, 14th and commercial. I have a lot of seniors that have cancer or I've just been discharged. It's kind of like the pool where they drop everyone. We took a ride with Heather Newhart, a homeless advocate who spends her days yeah. helping the unhoused. Let me get you some so you can at least give it out. I had a lady that was on this street. This is the honest God truth. She had, was stage four cancer and she was propped up right here and she was on a chair with two crates and that was her bed. I lost count of how many new diversified individuals or seniors or I, I've lost count. Most of the seniors I know that are on the streets are definitely handicapped one way or another and are still waiting for their affordable housing, for their Section 8 or whatever, or senior living housing. They don't have enough spots for them. Michael Anderson also lives at a city safe sleeping site, but he spent years on the streets after losing his job. I had a backpack a sleeping bag and some cardboard every night. And waking up at 4 in the morning every day to make sure you're packed up and ready to go before the cops get there is not fun. Especially when I started living with around other people and we would have to pack up our tents and everything. Um, and being slightly physical disabled, it sucked for me, but it was really, really hard on the older people that were around us. At just 48 years old, Anderson now also deals with a variety of health issues. This becomes even more tragic when people have 
these aging related health problems, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, things that we really can't treat effectively when people are homeless and we have no place for them to go. The health needs of seniors can require extra care, and most shelters are not prepared to serve this growing population. The services now are not quite caught up to those needs quite yet. I think it's happening much faster than we can really even start thinking about what are those specific services. We need to, first of all, solve our housing crisis. We need to have every effort on creating more housing, lowering the cost of housing, increasing housing subsidies, so that being an older adult living on a fixed income doesn't doesn't you know mean that you have to be homeless. With a quarter of the state's residents expected to be 60 or older by 2030, Kushel says the time to act is now. Um, we think this is going to get worse before it gets better, and the time is now for us to start addressing it unless we're ready as a society to have huge numbers of seniors living and dying on our streets. Frank feels the urgency, expressing determination in his attempts to find a place to call his own. My plan is to um, go and talk to these people about the shelter um, and get on the list with them so I can get on the housing list, you know, and hopefully that's moved quickly. You know, as long as I stay on that list, and um, and only, and that's all I can do is just keep my head up and, and keep going, trudging along. Highlighting the ongoing struggles and hopes of those living on the streets. Hoping to get housing, you know. Um, I called Paste, and um, that, that's what get back with me, you know. I wish I could help. I wish I wish I could win the lottery. Build a building downtown or buy a building downtown, keep all the rich, rich folks on the streets and move all the poor people in. And on their way out, I'd hand them 10 and the student back. Here you go. Have fun. But for now, Michael and others continue to wait for permanent housing solutions to get them out of the tents or the cars they are currently living in. Amber Frias, NBC7. Wow, Amber, this is a heartbreaking but really powerful look at the reality of our homeless crisis. I mean, we talk about the problem in generalities so often, but when you hear those individual stories of the people who are impacted and this is their daily lives and routines, it really paints a very personal picture. Yeah, Monica, and it was really heartbreaking to hear all these stories because the reality is that most of the people, if not all of them, especially the ones that we spoke to, they all told us they wanted shelter. They wanted a place of their own. And it was either because they couldn't afford it, like the first man who we heard from, he just didn't have enough money. His social security was only enough for to barely even cover shelter, right. or they had trouble navigating the shelter system in our county. Mm -hmm. But it was just heartbreaking to know. Yeah. The yeah, place they're in. It is. It was um, powerful to hear from them for sure. And we're going to continue this discussion still ahead. How has the enforcement of the encampment ban impacted on house seniors? How do they want us to go into shelters and there's no rooms in the shelters? How do they want to reinforce us to have an option to go somewhere else better if they don't have the, the necessities or the spots? Plus, Dr. Margo Cushell, Professor of Medicine and Division Chief at the Division of Vulnerable Populations at Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital, goes in-depth with us about the problem and potential solutions. Welcome back. We're talking about why seniors have become the fastest growing population within the unhoused community. And we're here with NBC San Diego reporter Amber Frias, who has been extensively reporting on this topic. And Amber, one of the key issues that just keeps coming up among the general homeless population is the rising cost of housing here in San Diego. Now, you spent a lot of time on the streets talking with seniors. I have to imagine this is something you heard a lot about. Yeah, it really is, Monica, and it, it's especially true for this population because a lot of these people are depending on their Social Security. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, if not all the times, whatever they get is not enough to be able to afford rent here in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure you heard that time and time again. In fact, I think we have some sound from some people that uh, Amber spoke with. Take a listen. We've got a lot of seniors that are out on these streets now because the economy their social security doesn't pay them enough. There's not affordable housing for them. <clears throat> they become ill and it's, they have their choice between their medication or food. 
or their homes. At one point I was living in a studio that didn't even have a kitchen. Um, it had a shared bathroom mm -hmm. and it was costing me 1100 a month. Joining our discussion now is Dr. Margot Cashel, director of the UCSF Benioff Homelessness and Housing Initiative. Dr. Cashel, thanks for being with us. Affordability of housing is so critical for any vulnerable group, especially seniors. What are you seeing across California? We are seeing rising numbers of seniors falling into homelessness. Um, we know now that almost half of single adults are 50 and older. And almost half of those first became homeless after the age of 50. These are people who are working poor, who've been working their whole lives, who are barely hanging on. And sometime after the age of 50, something happens. They get sick, their spouse gets sick, their marriage breaks up, their spouse or partner dies, something happens and they have no cushion and they wind up on our streets. You know, you said something in Amber's report, and Amber spent an extensive amount of time on the streets talking with people about this and people who have been impacted by this. You said when talking about homelessness, 50 is the new 75. It's startling. Yeah. yeah, you know, the experience of homelessness is so harrowing, and um, people who fall into homelessness are often people who've been working hard their whole lives, not getting great access to health care, and then they become homeless and everything falls apart. And so we've done extensive health testing on people who experience homelessness in older age. And what we find is people who are homeless, who are in their 50s and 60s, they really look much more like people in their 70s and 80s in the general population. They have high rates of cognitive impairment, of mobility impairments, difficulty walking, of all sorts of age-related problems, but we're just seeing them 20 or 30 years earlier than we would in the non-homeless population. Amber, in your experience out there reporting on this, did you notice that? I really did. You know, I the first man in my report that we spoke to, he was in his 70s, but from his appearance, he looked much older and he was also very sick. And then Dr. Kushel, we also spoke about the part that these are people who are on the street, so they don't really have access to medical care, which I'm sure just makes it so much worse. Absolutely. I mean, there are many reasons why things fall apart even worse when people become homeless. You know, part of it is the nonstop violence they're exposed to, the exposure to the elements, that lack of sleep. But another big part is that people really lose connection to the healthcare system. I'm a primary care physician. I love doing what I do. And what I do is to help people live their best lives, to manage chronic illnesses, to engage in healthcare prevention so that were they to develop a cancer, we catch it earlier or we catch it before it starts. When people become homeless, they lose their connection to that. So they lose their medicines for their chronic health problems. They lose their ability to get their vaccines, their healthcare screening. And so this really causes everything that to really get worse. Yeah, and you know, another point that was made within the piece that you did, Amber, was that someone said it was going to get worse before it would get better. Do you believe that's the case and what contributes to that? I do. I really am concerned um, about this problem. We know that the people born in the second half of the baby boom, so about 1955 to 1965, have been at an increased risk of homelessness their whole lives. It's obviously a very large population. We know that homelessness is really related to housing costs. So people often blame things like substance use or mental health problems on um, the rising rates of homelessness, but it really has nothing to do with that. What we see is when housing costs go up, homelessness goes up. As um, we continue to have a really severe housing crisis in California, we know that this very large group of older adults is gonna get larger. We know that across the country, it is renters 50 and older who are more likely to be what's called rent burden paying more than a third of their income on rent. Um, this group is continuing and we're really not doing enough to stop it. We um, don't, uh, the federal government does not really fund um, programs like they should. Only one in four households who qualify for housing subsidies get them. 
We know the cost of housing in California is out of control. We know that we have in California only 24 units of housing for every 100 extremely low income households. What you see on the streets is really just the tip of the iceberg. It's projected that people 65 and older experiencing homelessness, their numbers were gonna triple between 2017 to 2030. So we have not seen the worst of this crisis. And so the question is, what do we do? Because as you mentioned, it often feels kind of like we're putting a Band-Aid on this gaping wound. Is it putting more money toward housing affordability? And then we talk about the, the complex, complex factors of substance abuse and mental health concerns. What do you feel are our greatest needs here? You know, every avenue towards ending this crisis of homelessness run through housing. There's no question that many people who experience homelessness struggle with substance use and mental health problems. And there's no question that we need to get the treatment that they need to thrive. But we also know that that treatment without housing just doesn't work. And we know that the fundamental underlying disconnect that is leading to so much housing is the inability of people to pay, that's leading to so much homelessness, I'm sorry, is the fundamental inability of, for people to pay for their housing. The state is moving in the right direction with creating affordable housing, but it is achingly slow. A few years ago, we had only 21 units for every 100 extremely low income households. Now we're up to 24. That's a good start, but we need to do everything in our power to create housing, to preserve housing, and to advocate with our full force for that housing to be affordable. Some of housing affordability is just in terms of how much housing we have. The more you have, the cheaper it is. That's where the market works. But we need to recognize that as long as we have benefits set so low, as long as we have the minimum wage be so low, as long as we have so many seniors who don't have pensions, who work their whole lives in jobs that didn't give them pensions, we need to make sure that we have the subsidies so that our seniors, that people who are Californians can live out their old age in dignity and safety. And Amber, I think your report shed light on something interesting, too, when talking about first the housing affordability and these seniors who were left on the streets. It seemed like the incidence of mental health concerns, depression, anxiety escalated. And in some cases, and I don't know how many, maybe Dr. Cushell could shed some light on that, were turning to substances to try to suppress some of the anxieties of living on the streets. Yeah, as you can imagine, being on the streets, it's tough. Having to live out of your car, you know, is tough and having to figure out where to go to the bathroom, where to get food. So a lot of these people were dealing with, you know, just struggling with their mental health. Yeah, and trying to live day to day. Dr. Cushell, I imagine that's something that you've looked into as well. Absolutely. We know about two thirds of people experiencing homelessness have um, relatively significant mental health symptoms, but that's mostly driven by depression and anxiety. About half each have significant depression and significant anxiety. And when you um, talk to folks, they talk about it as both cause and effect of their homelessness. Sometimes people were struggling with mental health concerns that made it hard to keep up the two jobs that they needed to, you know, keep, let's say, to keep a roof over their head. But what people say is they become homeless and everything gets worse there i can't um overestimate the amount of violence that people are exposed to um that people have you know incredibly high rates of being physically and sexually assaulted people are sleep deprived they're anxious they're terrified they're ashamed this really wreaks havoc with people's mental health and as you said, you know, the substance use can both um, spur people into homelessness. It can tip people into homelessness. But what we're seeing again and again is the substance use getting worse. People talk about turning to alcohol to, um, to help ease their symptoms of anxiety. Obviously not a good long-term solution for anxiety, but in the moment it feels like it helps. We're also seeing increasing numbers of people turning to methamphetamines because it keeps them awake, and alert, it, it quells their hunger, and it seems to sort of solve in a, in a obviously a not effective way, but it seems to address some of their most urgent needs. And so we definitely see that people turning to or increasing substance use when they become homeless.
Yes. This is such a multi-layered issue, but if you were to boil it down and, and have one takeaway that you'd want the public to know about it, what would that be? I think the most important thing is that homelessness is a housing problem. We know that when we compare regions with high and low rates of homelessness, it is a straight line relationship between the availability of housing for the lowest cost households. And therefore, every solution to this problem runs through housing. It's not that, that it isn't also related to mental health and substance use problems. Of course it is, but we can't solve this problem without really addressing our critical shortage of housing. And people have to recognize that it is our seniors who are at most risk. We certainly appreciate Dr. Cushell's valuable insight into this most important issue. And Amber, we appreciate your research and reporting on this evolving problem. We, of course, will continue to follow this topic here on NBC San Diego News. For now, I'm Monica Dean. Thanks for watching.